everyone. My name is Jordan Hopkins, and I am a research assistant at the Social Neuroscience Lab here at UCR. Our research looked at the influence of context and self-esteem on self-concept malleability. We had two contexts for this study, uh, hanging out with friends or studying at school. So when we talk about self-esteem, that's going to be that global evaluation of yourself. So on average, I'm a good person, or all in all, I feel I am a failure. Talking about the malleability of self-concept, that's going to be how fluid or changing is your self-description um, across these contexts. So you may say, I'm really charming when I'm hanging out with my friends. I'm not very charming when I'm studying at school. That's going to be that malleability factor. So to better introduce this research, we want to know a few things. First is that prior research has found self-esteem may be a key factor in the stability of self-concept. Additionally, individuals with lower self-esteem may more readily attribute traits that are presented to themselves. So you may tell someone with lower self-esteem, hey, you seem kind of neurotic. They're likely to say, yeah, I'm neurotic. You tell someone with higher self-esteem, you're kind of disagreeable. They're not gonna be quick to agree or attribute that to themselves. And overall, self-concept can be malleable or enduring depending on the context and the characteristics of traits an individual is reflecting on. This lends itself to our two research questions. The first being, how do individual self views vary across casual and academic contexts? The second being, how do individual self-esteem influence differences in these ratings across the two contexts? So for our method, we had two key parts. The first being the self-descriptiveness task. For this, we had 41 participants rate themselves on a scale from one, not very self-descriptive, to seven, very self-descriptive, on 64 positive traits in both these contexts. So hanging out with friends or studying at school. We then had them fill out the Rosenberg self-esteem questionnaire, which is that measure global, uh, the global measure of self-worth. Um, so again, you have statements like, on the whole, I'm satisfied with who I am, or all in all, I am a failure. So the results were interesting for this study. We first found that on average, so generally, we do attribute more positive traits to ourselves in a casual context than an academic one. This could imply that we are typically more sensitive to having positive traits attributed to ourselves in a casual context than an academic one. We're with our peers, we have people who support who we believe ourselves to be, which is presumably positive for the most part. However, the self-esteem had a different uh, outcome than we expected. We expected lower self-esteem to correlate with higher malleability. We found the opposite. So the higher self-esteem an individual had, the greater the difference we saw between their ratings across these contexts. So say you have higher self-esteem, you may have given yourself a six in charminess in the casual context, but a two in charminess in the academic context. Whereas if you had lower self-esteem, it may have been a three across the board. What does this kind of tell us? Well, it could imply that self-esteem is more so a weak predictor of uh, the differences in self descriptiveness ratings. However, it can be a stronger predictor of our ability to adapt to social demands of different contexts. So to kind of discuss these results a bit more, you may want to consider the fact that our self-esteem may indicate an ability to alter ourselves to meet the demands of a context. So with higher self-esteem, you may be able to say, I'm more charming with my friends now because it's necessary. And in an academic context, you may be willing to turn that charminess down and focus on your studies, get that A and go on about your business. Individuals with lower self-esteem may not have that same adaptation. However, it's important to note here that we're unsure if having higher self-esteem leads to this adaptability or if being more adaptable can increase your self-esteem. That's something we can look at in the future. Overall though, uh, we do wanna know that self-esteem is a weak predictor, but still a predictor. We may wanna look at other factors. So for future directions, we may want to look at different characteristics, maybe how depression or the dialectical self, which is that temporal idea of who you are, can influence the malleability of self-concept. Moreover, we may want to have participants rate negative traits more so than positive traits and see how that influences the malleability of self-concept and the overall self-descriptiveness ratings. Additionally, we may want to investigate how different trait qualities, such as maybe interpersonal quality, can play a role in these different ratings that we had. So with that, I want to acknowledge and thank my graduate mentor, Julia Hopkins, my research contributor, Bernice Chung, and my faculty mentor, Dr. Hughes, as they were all a great help to this research and the creation of this presentation. I wanna thank you all for your taking the time to listen and provide your attention. And I will close and allow for any questions you guys may have for me. Okay. Um, I just have a clarif uh, question for clarification. So sure. you, did you administer the questionnaire uh, the self-esteem questionnaire in different contexts, or did you just ask them how they felt in those contexts? So for the questionnaire, that was just a general, what is your self-esteem rating? 
Uh, we have imagined themselves in a different context for these self prescriptiveness tasks. You're looking so, at those 64 positive traits, that's when the two contexts came in. I see. So they were just, you just pulled them in this context. How do you feel? They weren't actually there when you administered the test. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you go back to the slide about uh, for the one through 10 hanging out with friends or studying in school? Yes. What exactly does this tell you? Uh, this is telling us uh, what traits will individual tend to give themselves in different contexts. So, for example, let's say we have communicative. On a scale from one to seven, when you're with your friends, how communicative are you? That's going to be one aspect of it. Okay, now you're studying at school. On a scale from one to seven, how communicative are you? Um, that's what it's telling us here is how do people self-describe themselves in two different contexts. Does studying at school imply that they're alone or with the group friends? Well. Um, so the way we garnered this uh, kind of research is that we had participants first detail a scenario for both. So a scenario in which you were hanging out with your friends, a scenario in which you were studying at school. So it varied upon their given scenario, but they reflected upon that scenario when um, providing these answers. Yes. So for grading, did they just send you the report in the mail? Did you do it? Right. Um, I think because self-esteem was more so a weak predictor and it may speak more to adaptability, I may want to look at more so maybe depression and the dialectical self. Um, that idea of having temporal knowledge of who we are, so we think, really think about who we are, we really believe it. How would that influence malleability? We would assume that it would have lower malleability, but maybe that's not the case. Maybe there are other factors rather than what you think about yourself uh, that kind of influence these differences in ratings that we see. What was the overall range of, uh, of the self-esteem rating that you received from the participants? Uh, because we summed it, I think, let me go to the graph. Excuse me. So it was going to be a scale from about 20 um, or zero to about 40. Might, might you expect, and this is a speculation at this point, but might you expect like um, scores that are significantly higher to change the outcome there? Um, like, I guess I just imagine someone with like very, very high self esteem mm -hmm. uh, to be maybe in the camp where that self esteem is maladapted, where uh, mm. uh, or they are less willing to try to change uh, parts about their uh, uh, personality in different social contexts. But um, yeah, I would. I, I don't know, like if you would expect that at higher uh, at higher scores or not. All right, that's an interesting point um, because again, prior research has found that the lower self esteem you should have found more uh, malleability in theory. However, we have to keep in mind we focus on two certain contexts. So for what you're saying, maybe that would be different if we looked at two different casual contexts. So maybe with your friends, that's going to be different from maybe when you're networking, still a casual context, but you're getting to know people who don't know you. That may spell um, more results or more interesting conclusions than perhaps maybe just higher self-esteem, but in the same context. So for that, I would consider, all right, they have really high self-esteem. Let's look at different contexts, though. So maybe when they are in a situation where they have to discuss hot button issues, Will that still play a role or will they be adaptable then or malleable then because it is hot button? So that could be considered a future direction uh, for studies like these. Yes. If you were this like personally, if you were going to take this in a, a next future direction, mm -hmm. would you maybe um, prioritize looking at different contexts or uh, maybe different like per, uh, target participants or, or any other direction that uh, you would think of? Right. Okay. So for myself, I would want to look at the same context only because school and casual or with friends are the two contexts that comprise most of my life, right? So as an undergraduate student, I have family, but I'm going to more so be at school and then with friends or with your friends at school. However, I do know that we utilize UCR undergraduates and there's a greater pool of maybe community college students who are different. And again, there's going to have a greater age range maybe than here. So that could also be a limiting factor, but it is something I want to consider. Additionally, though, I also want to take into account um, minority differences. So if you are someone who is maybe the sole person or you're one of three in your setting, are you going to try to be a little bit more interpersonal and attribute more of those traits to yourself in an attempt to get people to positively perceive you? So that's going to be a future direction I would like to take is minorities still in these contexts, maybe a um, 
population size to where minorities are maybe more varied and diverse and available to study. Mm -hmm. So you said that um, before they filled out the tough student questionnaire, mm -hmm. they wrote, you had them come up with their own mm -hmm. context where they're either with friends or mm -hmm. in school. Right. Did you see any differences based on how they described the context? Like maybe one guy or student explains that the teacher is present versus another one they're in school, but it's more of a study hall. There's no teacher present. Mm -hmm. There's a difference there. Did you see anything like that or did you look at that? Um, more so because we did specify it was studying at school. So it's not going to be necessarily a with a teacher context. That is a possibility, of course. If you're maybe in office hours, I may be considered studying for someone else. So that is something we can consider in the future. It may even be considered, uh, for lack of a better term, a limitation in that there may be higher variability there. Um, but again, the study does kind of tell us the general results. So on average, this is kind of what happens. Um, so it's a good, uh, for lack of a better term, jumping off point. But it is something that we can go back into a bit more deeper. Did you see any like differences in the way people were describing the context? Or did it seem like people were all pretty much saying they were coming up with those situations that are very similar? It was pretty similar in weight wise, as in you're with your friends. It's not going to be something maybe crazy per se. Um, it's still going to be hanging out with your friends. For the school context, it's still going to be some aspect of studying. So it's not just, oh, I was at school and um, that's just kind of the setting to me. I'm at school, I'm in the classroom. So there may be variability, of course, in their experiences, but it is still that idea of casual versus academic, where there's academic maybe pressure and there's maybe less so pressure in that casual context. 